Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Mel and today we've got a little bit of a different video coming at ya. I've been trying to stay up to date with Ruth Ware's new releases over the years and up until recently I had read most but not all of them and when I realized how close It Girl was to coming out I just figured what better way to celebrate the release than to bring you guys a guide to Ruth Ware. So First off, let me just say, I will be reviewing It Girl at the end of this video, but as a whole, this is not going to be a review video. It's not going to be something that I give you all of my personal thoughts and ratings. I'm going to be coming at you with different things on a scale, and hopefully this will help you decide if you have not read Ruth Ware, where you want to start, or if you have, maybe this will help you decide which book that you liked, that you might also like, or if you hated one, which ones to avoid. So the scale that we're going to be using for this one is whether it was predictable or shocking. So kind of in the middle is going to be, okay, I can see where that twist came from. I was surprised, but I can, I can see, I can see it coming. Going the opposite direction, predictable is just going to be, oh my goodness, that was way too predictable. I didn't even enjoy it because I saw it coming from page one. The other side, shocking is going to be there was almost no lead up into that. It just came out of nowhere. There were a million red herrings and it was just a shocking twist. Next, we're going to have atmospheric and fast paced. So the middle of this is going to be a book that has good vibes. You really got to understand and relate to the atmosphere, but the plot kept moving pretty quickly regardless. The other end of the spectrum is going to be a more slow burn mystery where the atmosphere surrounding the story really takes the forefront. Whereas the other side of the scale is going to be fast paced. So something where the atmosphere doesn't really play as big of a part and the plot is just moving, moving, moving. And lastly, we're going to have mystery versus thriller. So a lot of books are just classified as mystery thriller, but if you've read enough of them, you know that that's not always a good generalization. Yes, you do have books that are truly half mystery and half thriller, but you also have books like Agatha Christie that lean a lot more on the mystery side and they're not as thrilling. Whereas you have other books, take No Exit for example, where you kind of know where the plot is going from the very beginning, but how it gets there is really part of the journey. So I really wanted to go through all of Ruth, Wa Ruth Ware's full length novel releases so that you guys can hopefully figure out where you stand and what you want to read in regards to Ruth Ware. So we're going to start in publication order. In a Dark Dark Wood is about this one writer who has kind of lost touch with some of her best friends and she has been invited to the hen or the bachelorette party for one of her old friends from college. They kind of fell out of touch and she's not really sure why she's been invited but she decides to go with one of their mutual friends anyway. You flash back and forth to when there is an after, after a wreck where you know someone has died to the present where the person hasn't died yet. You don't know who is going to die or how you're going to get there. So for this one, I would kind of put it more in the middle of the predictability and the shocking scale. I do find that I could see where the ending came from. I wasn't overly surprised, but she did have enough red herrings in there that it wasn't one of those that I just knew it from the first page. I did stay guessing a little bit throughout, so I enjoyed that part of the story and I did find it kind of in the middle of the road. It wasn't super predictable, but it wasn't so shocking either. And then we have atmospheric and fast paced. This one again was pretty middle of the road for me. We had some great atmosphere where the dark woods and this cabin secluded in the middle of nowhere, all of these people together, very, and then there were none vibes. But then you were also pretty fast paced where it was not just hinging on the atmosphere to keep the plot moving. It was really moving on its own. But I would say that it leaned just a tad more atmospheric than it did fast paced. And then looking at mystery and thriller, pretty in the middle for me on this one as well. It was very mysterious and the plot did hinge on the mystery, but there was enough plot development and things happening that I feel like it was pretty middle of the road as far as thriller and mystery. This book I personally gave a three star. I tend to like those kind of middle of the road, atmospheric, fast paced, mystery, thriller type books. So this one worked for me. The next up is A Woman in Cabin 10. It's about a woman that writes for a travel magazine and she's been given the opportunity to go on a cruise ship. And while she's there, she witnesses a woman being thrown overboard, but nobody is talking about this. 
Nobody is mentioning that somebody has been thrown overboard. Everybody's acting like everything is just fine and she can't figure out why she's the only one that's worried about this. But she is desperate to figure out what happened and to try to tell somebody that something went wrong. This one is probably the one that I read longest ago, but when we're looking at the scale predictability versus shocking, I did find this one more predictable than I did shocking. I felt like you could kind of tell where it was going from earlier on in the book. There wasn't a ton of red herrings to the point where when everything was revealed, I was like, oh my goodness, that came out of nowhere. It did lean more predictable for me. When we're talking about atmosphere versus fast pace, this does hinge a lot on the atmosphere. You're in a secluded cabin on a boat and things are happening around her that she's trying to figure out and navigating this cabin. So it does hinge a pretty good bit on the setting. It was fast paced enough, but I felt like it hinged more on the setting alone. And then mystery versus thriller. This is one of the ones that I did feel like leaned a little bit more thriller. It wasn't quite as mysterious, which goes with the predictability scale. It was more predictable, but more thrilling, if that makes sense. So you kind of saw everything coming from the beginning, but the journey there was what really drove it home. This one I didn't love as much. I think I gave it a low three star, but it's been a very, very long time since I read it. And again, I want to stress that even though I'm giving you my ratings for these books, the scale has absolutely nothing to do with my rating at all. I'm trying to be very, very objective in regards to the scale so that you guys can figure out what you want to read. But for those that may have similar reading preferences to myself, I did want you to know what I rated it as well. Next up is The Lion Game. The Lion Game is about a woman who has kind of lost her identity. She has just recently had a baby and is trying to navigate this new world as a mom when suddenly she gets a text from one of her school friends saying that she needs her. So she drops everything and goes back to her old boarding school where a body has recently washed up on shore. All of her other friends are going to converge there to talk about what their friend needs. And when they were at their boarding school, they always played something called the lying game. And it was a game to try to gain the most amount of points, get people to believe your lies the most. But there was always one rule. They weren't allowed to lie to each other. And this is one of those that is going to have a pretty one-sided scale. For predictability and shocking, this book was extremely predictable to me. I had a pretty good idea from the very, very beginning how it was all going to shake out, and it shook out pretty similarly to what I thought. There wasn't anything that I was just completely shocked by that I couldn't have seen coming. There were not a ton of red herrings. There were a few, but it didn't rely on the red herrings. I did feel like this one you can see coming. It definitely relied more on atmosphere than it did being fast paced. We are set on a coastal town where this mill is essentially going into the ground and then we have a prep school. So absolutely it hinges very much so on the atmosphere and the things surrounding this mill and the school. And then as far as mystery versus thriller, it is a lot more mysterious. It's not moving in the way that, again, the plot and how things are going to happen is the driver of the story. It's more what is going to happen is the driver of the story. So definitely leans more mystery. I personally did not like this one at all. I gave it a one star. But if you are somebody that likes a more a more slow burn mystery, then this might be for you. Next up, we have The Death of Mrs. Westaway. The Death of Mr. Westaway is about a young woman who gets a letter and has suddenly figured out that she is going to be the recipient of a very wealthy inheritance, but she doesn't think she's related to this woman that has left the inheritance to her. But she is a honed tarot card reader and that's not paying the bills, so she decides to travel to this estate to try to claim this inheritance. But once she's there, she figures out that there is something very strange going on and she's trying to figure out the mystery surrounding this inheritance and who this woman was and who this is supposed to go to. This was one of the ones that I actually liked the best, I think, from Ruth, where it worked for me. It is a little more predictable than shocking. I don't feel like Ruth Ware really intends to be one of those authors that just tries to shock her readers. She really leans more into the building up a mystery and giving you clues along the way so that you could predict the story. Now some people are still going to be shocked. That's not saying that she doesn't have twists at the end of her books, but the build up there is a lot more 
developed in her novels, I would say, than in some others that are just giving you a twist to try to shock the reader. It does lean a lot more on atmosphere. Again, we are going to this home, this ancestral home, and the people and their relationships are really what this plot hinges on. It's not super fast paced. It's a lot more domestic in the relationships and the setting as far as how this book progresses. And I would say that it is a lot more mysterious than it is thrilling. There's not a whole lot of thrilling elements that are keeping the plot moving. It's more of a whodunit style book, but I did enjoy this one and again gave it like a three and a half high three star. Next up we have my personal favorite which is Turn If The Key, which is a book about a woman that starts that starts with a woman writing a letter to a lawyer from prison and then we flash back to this young nanny who sees a ad to go and nanny at this very smart house. She takes them up on that and then strange things start to happen with Within this house and she's not sure whether it's paranormal or whether it's the house itself. This one is the one that is the outlier amongst all of them I feel like and does lean a lot more shocking than it does predictable. This one the ending is not as easily seen building up. She does pull in a lot more red herrings. She does kind of give you a twist at the end that is supposed to be very shocking to the reader. So this is one of the outliers where I would say it lied more on the shocking scale but it is a very atmospheric read. So a lot of this book, again, hinges on the atmosphere of this smart house, and it is very creepy. The audiobook did the creepiness very, very well, but it is a very atmospheric read. However, once again, I do feel like this one is an outlier for Ruth Ware and that it was more thrilling for me than it was mystery. How things were going to develop, even though the twist at the end was shocking, the mystery was not the forefront of this book. It was how things were developing and what was going to happen next that was the driver of this story. I gave this one a four star. I really enjoyed it. Then we have her most recent release up until It Girl. One by One is a locked room mystery where this group decides to go on kind of a bonding business trip to the I think it's Swiss Alps and while they're there there's several different people that don't want to be there that aren't liked a lot of different personalities and people start getting picked off one by one. This one I would say is probably most people's least favorite and I think a lot of that is going to lean as to why The Lion Game is not as popular. This book is much more predictable. A lot of people complain that they kind of knew the killer from the first page and I agree it is very predictable. Now if you go into it like I did knowing that this is supposed to be a reminiscent of an old mystery novel not really our traditional mystery thriller novels I think you would enjoy this one more. It is very predictable and it's the journey of figuring out and kind of understanding all of these plot points that are laid throughout the book that is its driver. In which case I will say that atmosphere is definitely the driver of this book. It's set in a snowy ski resort, the snow, the locked in, people being picked off. That is all very, and then there were none reminiscent. So it definitely leans more atmospheric. And once again, it does lean a lot more mystery. I wouldn't say that it's just solid mystery like The Lion Game is. There are some thrilling elements to it, but it definitely hinges on the whodunit. This one I didn't dislike as much as everybody else, but again, I feel like it's because I knew all of that going in. So it was a higher two star for me. And lastly, we have It Girl. And It Girl I do want to review for you guys because it did just come out, but let me go through my scale first and then we'll talk about the review of the book. It Girl follows, follows two different timelines. The before timeline where Hannah is at this college Pelham in Oxford and her roommate April who is an It Girl. She is used to having it all. She is used to buying the expensive things and bossing everyone around. And then you have the after where Hannah is kind of living in this world where April has died and she helped convict the murderer or the presumed murderer of April. She is pregnant, she is married, she is happy, and then suddenly the perpetrator dies in prison and she gets sent on a spiral of is did this person actually kill April or did she get it wrong? I do feel like this one was predictable in some ways but had a lot of red herrings and others so I think I would probably put it middle of the scale between predictable and shocking. It definitely lied more on its atmosphere and this Oxford College relationships with Hannah and the other students and her current life than it did fast-paced. This plot this book is not go 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 
it is a lot more slow burn atmospheric. And then I would say that it's probably leaning more on the mystery than the thriller, but we aren't solely completely on the mystery side. There are some thriller elements in how things are going to play out, but for the most part, this does hinge on the whodunit part of the story. So for me, this one worked in some ways and not in others. I did find it extremely slow paced. Once we kind of got introduced to everything that was going on, there was a lot that hinged on just the relationships and Hannah kind of meandering around talking to people and letting you know how horrible of a person April was. So I did find myself bored at times with the meandering relationships. I just kind of wanted something to happen. But since the death had already happened, there wasn't a huge driver to the story other than Hannah trying to figure out if she convicted the wrong person. I could have kind of gotten past the fact that it was really, really slow and not overly engaging. But when we get to the end of the story and the big twist happens, I didn't buy it. As a matter of fact, at one point, the killer even says, I'm not going to give you a killer's monologue and tell you why I did it. So it's pure speculation as to what the motive was behind this killing in the first place. And I don't know, I just, I didn't, I felt like there were too many red herrings in some ways and that the ending just did not really make logical sense for me. And that really brought down my rating of the book. So for me, this one just didn't really work. I ended up giving it a two and a half stars between the fact that it was extremely slow and the ending just not making super logical sense to me. Eh, I just, this one was too long and it shows. It was about 100 pages longer than Ruth Ware's typical book, somewhere around 50 to 100 pages longer. You can tell, I just, this one didn't work for me and I kind of want her to go back to the turn of the key style where she did the spooky, spooky atmosphere really, really well. This one doesn't lean spooky at all. It is a much more of a domestic mystery than it is a spooky thriller. Okay guys, so I think that covers my guide to Ruth Ware. I hope you guys found this helpful. It was really interesting for me to kind of go through all of her books and rank them um, on a scale rather than trying to think about good or bad. I really wanted to give you a this or that kind of situation so that maybe you could figure out what Ruth Ware book worked best for you, where you wanted to start, or which books you might want to avoid. So if this video was helpful for you, please let me know down in the comments comments and let me know which one was your favorite Ruth Ware if you have read some of hers before or if this video was helpful what you plan to pick up next or avoid. You can catch up with me on Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads all linked down below as well as my Patreon. If you liked this video please don't forget to give it a good thumbs up and subscribe if you wanna and I will see you guys next time. Bye!